Hello everybody, my name is Josh from Fuji Spray, and in today's video, we're gonna show you how to perform a complete disassembly of your GXPC spray gun and demonstrate some areas of focus when performing a thorough clean. First, we're gonna start off by removing the pressure tube. And how you're gonna do this at the lid of the cup, we're gonna press down on this red ring and at the same time, you're going to pull on the pressure tube for a simple release. Then we're going to just go ahead and remove the pressure tube from attachment here at the bottom. Now we're going to remove the cup assembly. And you're going to notice here that the cup assembly of the GXPC has a little wing nut. So you can use a wrench to actually unlock or loosen this wing nut. Now we're gonna to go to the back of the spray gun and remove the fluid control knob. Here's a needle spring. And you might wanna pull on the trigger a little bit just so you can have access to the back of the needle. And carefully slide the needle out and make sure not to bend it. Now we're going to remove the fluid screw nut. And we're gonna use one of our wrenches here to do that. This fluid screw knot has a seal on it. Make sure you don't lose it, this, this white seal. Here you have the spindle valve spring. Pull the trigger a little bit and you have some access to the spindle valve. Now we're going to remove this barrel plug. You can just one, use one of your flathead screwdrivers to do that. Come back to the front and do the collar and air cap. We're gonna use the wrench that your GXPC spray gun came with and remove the fluid nozzle. Next, we're gonna use the cutout of our Fuji spray wrench to remove the nipple assembly. So this nipple assembly here is actually two components into one. The reason I'm taking it out from the larger nut is because this component may break if you were to attempt to remove it on its own. So it's best that you remove the whole component, both components together. And always inspect for any air blockages, for any blockages here in these air passages. Flip the gun over and we're going to now remove the fan pad and control knob. And for that you're going to need one of your smallest Allen keys. Put the Allen key here into this locking screw. And take that off, slide it right out.
And then we're gonna come over to the other side and remove the air plug using a flathead screwdriver. Now we're going to flip it over, push it through with your finger, and you're going to have a wave spring and a shaft washer. If you flip that spray gun over, and you're going to see sliding out the air deflector. Next item we're going to remove is the trigger. Now, you are going to need a special tool to remove this retaining ring. So, uh, most of you may not have it, and I'm going to show you how to do it with a flathead screwdriver. And we can put push our trigger pin through, set that down, and we have freed our trigger. Okay, so the next item we're going to remove is the gun block, but it is held together by a few items, a couple items. So we're going to remove this jam nut and this jam nut. There's two of them. First, we're going to start off with the fluid coupler jam nut. Once you've loosened this component, you're going to see two flat sides on the threads. There's one here and there's one here. Using the larger cutout of the end of the wrench, you're going to put your wrench right in there like that so it sits on the flat sides and you're going to loosen that fluid coupler. And it's, only, and it's only held by two threads, two or three threads, so be very careful how you're treating this. We're going to set this aside and we're going to loosen the other jam nut. Once you've done that, you can freely remove the gun block from the front of the spray gun. Okay, now that you have the gun block out, you're going to see a retainer ring and you're also going to see a diverter plate. When you are experiencing spray problems, you may also want to take a look at these little tiny holes on the back of the gun block to make sure that there's no obstruction there. And that's how you disassemble your spray gun. Now let's put it back together again. We're gonna work our way back and start off by putting in the gun block. You're gonna insert it in place and make sure that the, there's a little notch on the diverter plate and you gotta make sure it aligns with the gun body. So you push it in all the way through And we're going to put a jam nut, just not fully tightened, but we're just going to just make it snug enough so that the gun block remains steady. So we're going to put that jam nut back here, like so. And we're going to adjust it with the fluid coupler. And remember how we took it off. Now we're going to be very careful how we put it in. And keep in mind that there are only two or three threads that will be catching on the inside of the gun block. So make sure that the gun block is aligned. Okay, so now that that fluid coupler has been nice and tightened into the gun block, 
we're going to tighten both jam nuts over here to lock it in place and on the other end to secure it. Now we're going to reinstall the trigger. Make sure it's nicely aligned. When you put in the trigger pin, make sure that the flat end is on the side where the fan pattern control knob is. Push it through, hold it with your finger. And now let's put in our trigger pin. Make sure it's installed properly. It's working just fine. Okay, the next thing we're gonna put in is the air deflector. Let's just slide it back in there, like so. And the next item we're gonna put in is your shaft washer. Make sure it's nice and flat. And now your wave spring. Get that in there, and we're going to seal it off with our air plug. And now we're going to put in the fan pattern control knob on this side. And you're gonna notice that this little stem here has a flat end. So you gotta make sure that the flat end is facing this little opening here. And the reason you need to do this is so that the opening fits right into this nudge sticking out. Always make sure that there's a little bit of a gap right between the gun body and the fan pattern control knob. Coming back to the front of the spray gun, right at the bottom, we're going to add our nipple assembly. Give it a nice little tightening. Now we bring in the fluid nozzle. Tighten it back up with our wrench. Put the air cap in place and the collar. We're gonna put the rear components now. This is the barrel plug back in place. Get your flathead screwdriver Next, we're going to get our spindle valve. Push it all the way through. Spindle valve spring. And fluid screw nut with seal. And give it a couple of trigger pulls to make sure that it's working just fine. And then we bring in the needle. I'm going to insert the needle very carefully, not to bend it.
And then we put in the needle spring and fluid control knob. All right, lastly, we're gonna put in the cup assembly and pressure tube. We can lay the gun onto the side here and we're gonna tighten it with this wing nut. Perfect. And now we can put in finally our pressure tube. This is a one, one way direction valve. Air flows one direction. So the flat side is towards the gun and the tapered side is towards the cup. This meaning the air flow going into the cup. And that's how you strip and rebuild a Fuji Spray GXBC model spray gun. If you have any further questions, feel free to give us a call at 1-800-650-0930 or send us an email at support at fujispray.com. This is Josh from Fuji Spray. Thanks for watching.